everybody welcome to coffee with kelly uh week 72 oh my gosh i wore the same thing as last week oh no and i have the same coffee cup i'm just kidding i'm filming two in a row so i know you're thinking guys she doesn't even change but that is why i'm filming two and my topic this morning is called gods into math or mathematics so let's pray father i thank you again for your word i thank you that you love math and it's been fun to think on that lines and to explore that and i pray that this would be a fun time for all of us as well as we talk about this and i pray that you would challenge our heart that you would encourage us in our faith and that you would give us strength for whatever we're facing today in jesus name amen okay so god's into math have you ever thought about that so um the other day i was in my devotions and i ran across this story um, awesome story about Elijah in 2 Kings 4, 42 through 44. Now in context, it seems like we're reading all these random stories about Elisha's life. And I know they're not random, but it kind of seems like that. You're reading like story and then he did this and then he did that. And um, this is one of those stories. So 2 Kings 4, 42 through 44, it says, Then a man from Baal Shalisha, and brought the man of that he came from there and he brought the man of god bread of the first fruits 20 loaves of barley bread and newly ripened grain in his knapsack and he said give it to the people that they may eat and his servant said what shall i set this before 100 men he said again give it to the people that they may eat for thus saith the lord they shall eat and have some left over so he set it before them and they ate and had some left over according to the word of the Lord. And so we see this uh, miracle. This guy brings this bread to Elijah and uh, he has faith to um, feed all the people and God multiplies it. Now, it sounds a little bit like another story, doesn't it? Uh, the five loaves and five loaves, five loaves and two fish. And I just think that's such an interesting story because uh, God provided and he multiplied when it was needed. Now in the Gospel of John in chapter 6, 1 through 14, we see the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 that many of you are familiar with. The um, five loaves and two fishes. Now we know a great crowd of people were following Jesus and they saw him healing the sick. Jesus asks Philip, where should we go buy food or bread? You know, testing him basically to feed all these people. And Philip was like, hey, it'll never happen, Jesus. There's no way. Peter's brother Andrew uh, speaks up and says, well, here's what we have. In fact, why don't we just turn there to John, uh, John chapter 6. John 6. 1 through 14. Um, so Andrew then, uh, Simon Peter's brother comes and says, Hey, there's a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. That's just the men. And Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. So when they were all filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so nothing is lost. Therefore, they gathered them up and filled 20 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, This is truly the prophet who has come into the world. So again, just like in uh, when we read through Elisha, uh, God multiplying that food, we see that here as well. And I love that story. I love, we did a whole retreat, uh, retreat called 5 Plus 1 about it and looked at all the different characters and the aspects. I love it. The boy offering what little he had jesus teaching his disciples that he is the one to supply all their needs that nothing is impossible with him the disciples were so tired yet jesus asks them to feed them and they like us so often settle on the fact that they didn't have the ability the money or the strength because they were so tired to even help with the situation 
The disciples didn't think that what they had would be enough. Jesus asked the Father to bless it, instructs them to hand, or hand it out. And I wonder what they were thinking or feeling at that time. They know they only have five barley loaves and two fish. And I don't think as he prayed, they opened their eyes and it was like pff, tons of bread for 5,000. That's a lot of bread. That's not how I picture it. I picture it that he multiplied it in the action of handing out and distributing the food. That as they handed out, they were just able to continue to hand out and hand out and hand out. And God just kept supplying. Such an amazing miracle. A huge obvious lesson in that is that God provides, right? Jehovah Jireh, which is uh, another name for God, the provider. So God can multiply needs if he needs to. He can, I mean, multiply food or supplies. I've seen God do that in Haiti. I've seen it do it at the food bank. I've seen God do it in my own life. Where is he Jehovah Jireh? And it doesn't just mean that he provides food, but finances and all, all whatever he wants to provide, he is our Jehovah Jireh. So when needed, go back to what our theme is, God loves math. So when needed, God multiplies. But he also adds, I thought of a verse that in Acts that says, in Acts 5, uh, verse 15, it says that God adds to the church as he wills. You know, we always think huge churches, that that is a sign of God's blessing, and not always, but it says he adds as he wills. You know, just churches are the size that God wants them to be or allows them to be. He also adds blessings to our lives. He adds finances. He adds people you know, to our circles of friends and family and, and um, trust his math. So he multiplies, he adds, but God subtracts as well. How does he do that? Um, <coughs> I think oftentimes he runs wolves out of our churches. Uh, we call that the blessed subtraction. Now that doesn't mean if you've left our church or any other church that you're necessarily a wolf. That's not what I'm implying but he can run wolves out and he removes people that are maybe problemed people, perhaps, you know, for all different reasons, maybe they should be somewhere else, but he subtracts. He also can remove or subtract things from your life that you have idolized or held on to, you know, too strong or put them before God. He can subtract people that can harm you or har hobbies that are harmful to you or people that are leading you astray. He can subtract things that are causing way too much busyness in your life and you perhaps don't want him to subtract those things, but he does. So he, he does math, he multiplies, he subtracts, he adds, and he can divide. He doesn't like uh, oftentimes when we're the ones that are adding and subtracting. And I think of Revelation 22, 19, where, he said, where it says not to add or subtract anything to God's word. When we do that, we get in trouble. So that's not what we're talking about. So God loves math. And honestly, I hate math. I like math like 2 plus 2 is 4. Like I get that. But when it gets harder into square roots and pi and you know, they had, cal I never even took calculus. I found a way to get out of it. And my best friend growing up, her mom was a math teacher. And I spent literally probably hundreds of hours at her house, her trying to explain this equation and how she came to the number. And sometimes I uh, trusted the process, but honestly, for me to tell you how I came to that number, I didn't understand it. I could sometimes do it. I didn't flunk it, but I didn't understand it. I had to trust the process. Um, I should trust, I trusted her because she understood the process. And, and I think why it was so hard to me is that sometimes it didn't make any sense. And I am a person, if you know me, it has to make sense. It's just got to make sense to me. And that's one of my biggest uh, struggles, fall, uh, you know, kind of in my faith, that I want to understand things. I want to understand what God's doing. And when I don't, and I don't see um, the practicalness or even the spiritual part of it, I, it really bothers me. But this is the same with God's math, if you think about it. Am I willing to trust him? Am I willing to trust the one who wrote, who wrote the problem? And uh, am I willing to trust his process? 
uh, simple things he does, I get in my life, okay? I get it. But when I feel like the reason is hidden or he hasn't allowed me to see or to know, um, I still have to trust that he knows the correct answer and trust his process to get there. And sometimes trust is the process or, or trust or waiting is the process, you know? And I have to trust that he knows what he's doing in my life and I need to trust that. Do I trust that he can multiply things in my life when he needs to for my good and his glory? When I'm facing a problem that seems impossible, do I believe he can provide for me? Multiply what needs to be multiplied. Subtract what needs to be taken away. Do I trust and do you trust that he can add people, subtract people and circumstances or subtract circumstances? Whatever he's doing, whether it's multiplying loaves and fishes, increasing numbers in your ministry, or taking away your ministry, will you trust him? There's no better mathematician than God himself, and we need to begin to trust the process. He is our Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider in every area of our life, not just money. You know, when God told that, that name, when God told Abraham to offer his son Isaac as a burnt, burnt offering in Genesis 22, and then God relented. Remember, he put uh, Isaac on the altar and, with a knife and he's about to sacrifice him and an angel comes and, and he tells him he doesn't have to do it and relents it and God uh, provides a ram in the thicket to as a substitute sacrifice. Abraham named that place after God provided the ram as a sacrifice in place of Isaac. He named the place God will provide. Je God is my Jehovah Jireh. Remember, it means the Lord will provide. Not only God did provide. That name itself not only memorializes the past as we look back at what God did, but it anticipates a future action. God did provide. God has provided. And God will continue to provide. It's an important distinction to remember. And notice that it was in Abraham's faith that God provided and he provided. As Abraham obeyed to the end, he took the step, he tied up Isaac, he put him on the altar. He didn't understand the process of what God was doing. He didn't understand it because God had promised him a son and that he'd provide, you know, uh, raise up this son. How is killing him make any sense? And he rested, I guess, on the fact of, well, God can raise him from the dead if need be. And God steps in at just the right time. But Abraham was willing to obey and obedience on our part is that action that we must do and then God will provide. You know, I love the song that's really popular right now. It's by Elevation Worship and someone else and it's called Jira. I love it. For a long time I was singing it and I realized, you know how you sing along and you're singing the wrong words and I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I singing? And that happens to me all the time. And so I kind of looked it up and saw what the words were and, um, one of the, the stanzas is, I never will be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. And then the chorus is, you are Jaira, you are enough. Jaira, you are enough. And I will be content in every circumstance. You are Jaira. You are enough, forever enough, always enough, more than enough. I can't sing, but I love that phrase. Because he's Jaira, I can be content in every circumstance. Such a great reminder that he is enough. He is Jaira. Trust his math, ladies. He is the great mathematician. I wish there was a word for that in the, in the Hebrew or the Greek. He doesn't make mistakes. And in the end, it will always add up, get it? So trust in the process. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you are more than enough, forever enough, always enough, and that we can be content in every circumstance. God, that we can trust you. We can trust as you multiply. We can trust as you add. We can even trust as you subtract. Because God, you are the great mathematician and you wrote the problem and you know the way 
to fix it and to come up with the answer. So teach us how to trust you in this and uh, to trust you with the problem and the equation. I love you so much, God. I love these uh, stories like the one in Elijah as you provided for the people there to eat. I love the story in John, the five loaves and the two fish. God, help us to offer what little we have, like the boy with the five loaves and two fish, and trust you to do what you want to do with it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Sorry again for my singing. It was not fun to listen to. Have a great day. I love you guys.